I believe we've uh, witnessed a very disturbing trend within the last five years, which is uh, antithetical to a free and just society. And that is the fact that on the internet, big corporations get to weigh in on highly controversial issues and decide what is the correct way of thinking. And if you don't happen to have the correct way of thinking, then obviously you're going to lose your online voice. But that is not why it's disturbing. It's disturbing because as time moves on, you notice that the establishment was wrong. So in reality, you have this entire censorship industrial complex. And as we saw on Twitter, it's not just corporations, although they do play a big part in the system. It's also activists, journalists, people from the academia, NGOs, and politicians. And all of them are working together in order to get to decide what the truth is. I believe it started with the Black Lives Matter protests. Uh, maybe it started earlier than that, but that's when it was very noticeable. Uh, anyone that said anything critical of the organization risked having their account terminated. But now we know that the organization itself was incredibly corrupt. Um, most of the money went to Democrats as well as the people in charge of the organization and their family members. Corporations were telling people, hey, in order to get rid of your uh, guilt, of your racial guilt, you should donate to the activists, which chose a very smart name, Black Lives Matter, specifically to generate confusion between the sentiment and their organization. And I remember that when it was first revealed on how the money was being spent, that a leader from this organization was buying mansions, Facebook stepped in and started banning people talking about it and suppressing the news. And it's interesting because at the time you couldn't say anything critical. Like immediately the, the videos would get suppressed, uh, the, the stories would get suppressed. But now it's fine. Like now you can talk about it. Now everyone talks about it. And they're looking back and they're like, well, how, how could people have been so clueless? COVID is another great example. Uh, if you have read the Twitter files that Musk showed to the public regarding COVID, uh, there were directives coming uh, from official sources saying that if a doctor, even if he is right, but if he contradicts the orthodoxy, if he says something that is scientifically okay, but contradicts the government mandates, they should be suppressed. They should be banned. And we've seen doctors getting banned from social media, like people with medical accreditations and people just doing research, getting banned. And that was the moral panic then. Now it's okay to talk about it. Now, now you can look back and you can discuss it. But at the time, you literally couldn't. And uh, I'm pretty sure there might have been uh, other things like uh, the American election, uh, but now uh, it seems that the Daily Wire has received over a hundred strikes for hate speech. And some of the people receiving strikes for hate speech completely bewildered me because it was uh, Jordan Peterson. Now, say what you want about Jordan Peterson, whether you like what he has to say or not. The man has uh, a way of talking in order to avoid the minefield that is political correctness. Like, he, he can express himself in a way that... Uh, even like the, the most moderate people will not find him unsavory. And he has done numerous interviews. He has been in numerous places. Like he, he just doesn't speak in a way that is considered problematic. And yet he got a community guideline strike. And I think the reason for this um, and, and why so many people from the Daily Wire are getting striked, including uh, Candace Owens, and uh, if they're not getting striked, they're getting flat out demonetized, is for misgendering. Uh, the topic that we are not allowed to discuss now in the open is transgender issues, especially the ones pertaining children. And I think it's also due to the fact that an election is coming. So, so this is where the censorship apparatus is directed at right now. It, it's kind of like the eye of Sauron that looks at different cultural issues um, and then it just switches to another one and it becomes completely acceptable to talk about the thing it wasn't acceptable to talk about a couple of years back. Like, for example, and this is um, 
the the first time that uh, I became woke, I woke up my eyes. It was when uh, you couldn't talk anything negative about Islam, right? So there was a time, um, especially when you had the attacks at Nice and the attacks in France and a lot of other things. You, you weren't allowed to say anything negative about Islam. In fact, in the UK, there was a man that was a re that, that got in trouble with the police for saying Islam is questionable. Like, he actually wrote that on, on his house, got in trouble with the cops. And meanwhile, I was sitting, looking baffled at the fact that only a couple of years ago, you had that uh, famous comedian sketch with Ahmed the Dead Terrorist. And everyone was laughing, got millions of views, there weren't any problems. But now, you're going to talk about anything of the sort. And uh, that, that was the culture then. But then as time moves on, Emmanuel Macron comes out and he has like some of the political takes that would have got you banned from social media if you just said them. Like he, he was saying that um, Islamo leftism is destroying the republic and, uh, you know, it's an ideology that's incompatible with uh, the secularity of France and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking like, wow, OK, so if you said that on social media a couple of years before you'd have gotten in big, big trouble. But now it's okay to say it. And, and, and it's... What, what really annoys me is that every single time they're weighing in on these issues, as time moves on, it turns out that the reason they had to do the censorship in the first place is because most of the time those issues were correct. Like the controversy weighed into the favor of the people that were getting canceled. I guess, you know, like, if, if something is legitimately true, like, let's say 2 plus 2 equals 4, but you have a huge group of people that believes it's 5, well, you don't really need censorship. Like, all you need is someone to take two sticks and two other sticks, add them together, and show them that it's 4, right? You do, you do not need to censor people. But, but when you are the one that's claiming that 2 plus 2 equals 5, funnily enough, some academics actually are, so when you are claiming this, well, you do need to censor anyone that says it's four. And eventually, people will say it's five because they want to maintain their social media presence. So I just wanted to point out the state where it is. Now, regarding YouTube, what I believe is happening is that uh, they're justifying these uh, community guideline strikes for misgendering. Because I, I did start watching... Uh, members of the Daily Wire, which I haven't done before, but I was like legitimately curious to see what keeps getting them in trouble. And uh, they're not instigating hate towards uh, marginalized groups. They're not doing anything like that, but they have misgendered. And misgendering used to be a thing that wasn't allowed on Twitter. Like every other social media platform allowed you to do it. Um, maybe Twitch wasn't one that would allow you to do it, but either than that, like it could have been done. Um, you could do it on YouTube as well. And I actually got in trouble for not misgendering, right? Because uh, when I would talk about uh, something that was of public interest and it was talked on every single news channel, like, for example, uh, a mass shooter, which happened to be trans, and I respected the pronouns. I had people go like, V, why are you doing this? Why, why are you respecting the pronoun? Well, it's because, as you can see, I accurately predicted what would happen. Like, you get people that get their accounts taken down. Now, I'm not connected to the Daily Wire. I, I do not have the backing of the Daily Wire to protect my channel if something like that happens, right? And in order to communicate my opinions to the viewers, I had to make sure that I don't misgender. At the end of the day, it's not my platform. I don't make the rules, but I can accurately predict them. And it does seem that uh, they're applying this standard that wasn't there before. And people weren't aware, which is why the Daily Wire, which got into a confrontation with Crowder literally over this regarding the terms of service at YouTube and what you are and aren't allowed to say, they're now getting striked. And they're getting striked because they haven't been informed of the new change in the terms of service. Now, I do not know if these changes come because YouTube has a different CEO now uh, or if the changes come because the advertisers demand it. Like, take into account that the advertisers have formed a union of some of the largest corporations, and they are partially responsible for creating and coining the terms of service on social media. They will flat out say, like, this is what we deem acceptable, and if you do not comply, we will not advertise on your website. It's kind of hard to say no to them. Um, but you also, 
have to take into account that there's activists and other forces that are pushing in the same direction. So it may not even be YouTube that legitimately cares about misgendering or not, but it can be that the advertisers care. And the advertisers might care because of the whole uh, Bud Light situation. They're terrified by it. They want to take money from investments uh, that, that are being provided by BlackRock and Vanguard, which means that they have to adhere to ESG issues. But at the same time, they do not want a backlash from their own consumers about it. Because up until now, the way you did business in America was to antagonize the right-wingers. The right-wingers didn't boycott, didn't do anything. They weren't united in any way. Uh, so they would keep buying from you, but they would complain about you on the internet. And then you'd have like the far left mocking and ridiculing the right-wingers. And this back and forth, this, this negative, harmful conversation would generate buzz and traffic to the company. Um, you would log on uh, Twitter and you would see Bud Light trending. And then you're like, hmm, Bud Light. Well, I'm actually uh, a little bit thirsty right now, so I may as well just get a beer. That was the way they were planning to advertise. And uh, for a while it worked. Uh, it's still working for entertainment, like movies and video games. Not so much for other things, which uh, people can have a variety of options in choosing. So they they do not want more targets and bad likes. The advertisers do not like this. So they will probably try their best in order to suppress the conversation. Uh, but if anything is to go by, after a couple of years, everything where that, that's not okay to be talked about now is going to be allowed to be discussed in the public. However, there's going to be something else that you're not allowed to talk about. I don't know, maybe the conflict uh, in Taiwan, if heaven forbid, that materializes. You know, you're going to only be forced to have one opinion about that. I do not know. But what I do know is that uh, for sure, in a couple of months, give or take, maybe after the elections in the United States, uh, all of this thing, which right now is not allowed to be discussed in any way, shape or form, is going to be uh, freely open for debate. It is unfortunate, though, that YouTube considers itself a platform where people can debate when uh, one side of the debate is being heavily suppressed. Like, how can I even have a debate to begin with? Like, if I want to talk with the leftist, right? Uh, they, they can have, like, the most fringe, radical, extremist takes that would actually get people in a marketplace annoyed, right? Like, they, they can say, like, the most outlandish stuff, uh, but... If I try to give the definition to what is a woman, then uh, I, I get suspended. Interesting, you know, like how, how can you have a debate like that? It's not it's not even like considered uh, fighting with Mike Tyson with your hands tied behind your back. Like it's it's even worse than that. It's, it's not even one sided. Like you, you lose before you begin. You can't use your arguments. But anyway, right. Uh, let me know what you guys think. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.